now that I'm concerned about, and they're talking about on the news, is that Donald Trump put himself in the position of being the person who was offering change. And <clears throat> typically in elections, the person who is offering a change is often the one that is more successful. And counter to that, uh, what I saw happening is that Kamala Harris had 107 days to get something together that would separate her campaign from uh, the Biden administration. And I, I think that it was a gargantuan, impossible task, and that she did as well as she did, I, I, I think that's commendable, and I think that's hopeful. That's yeah. Thank you for that, Deborah. And I'm going to ask Chris if he will uh, what what he thinks about that analysis. Do you, Chris, do you think it was largely a matter of Harris not having enough time to get her message out? Well, there there is a general consensus that that Trump was able to tie her very closely to the Biden administration. So if people are thinking they didn't do very well in the economy under Biden, or they think things are going uh, south in terms of uh, the quality of their life and and Kamala Harris had just come in, you know, just in the summertime, people were were uh, buying into Trump's attachment of her to to the Biden administration. And after all, she was the vice president during that. That so there is a general sense that that those seeking change were looking for change from uh, Biden, who had, who was fairly unpopular. One of the other things too that came up, Laurie, is, is uh, Graham's comment about, about being a, a dual citizen and moving his family up to Canada. Uh, people did that, as you know, during the Vietnam yes. War, in fact, illegally in many ways, draft dodgers. But also I, I've known people during the Bush uh, junior administration during the Iraq war who didn't want uh, their sons to be drafted for, for that war. So we have a close connection to the United States just being within 100 miles of, of of the border. So um, Canadians very much have been watching this election and they know they will be affected by by the uh, change from the Biden administration over to the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting um, hearing uh, the commentators say that uh, Kamala Harris had underperformed in, in certain regions and also that Trump had attracted uh, groups of voters that one wouldn't normally expect him to attract. What, what What's that about? Well, you know, Trump uh, in the New York Times Daily this morning, they're commenting that Trump in the previous election uh, had like a 35 percent favorability rating and in this election, 50 percent favorability. So there is a sense and people are almost accepting of him in spite of his 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 quirks or or problematic uh, behaviors. So I, I think that um, people, uh, especially those who voted for Trump, uh, who might object to his type of personality or unpredictability might say a pox to all politicians, regardless of what political stripe. And I'm willing to live with Trump's foibles or or poor character because all politicians have a poor character. So I, I think in some ways, a lot of swing voters were willing to go over to Trump. And what do you think they're talking about in Kamala Harris's uh, war room right now? What What are the points that they'll be bringing up to each other in what went on? <laughs> Well, I, I suspect there might be some finger pointing, but I, uh, you know, what was quite, quite striking is that she didn't give a concession speech to her people uh, late in the night when it was clear that Trump had won. I don't recall a presidential candidate uh, um, being in that situation and not giving a speech when it was clear uh, having lost. And I suspect, I think she's speaking at John Hopkins today to, to her supporters, but that was quite striking. It's obvious that they didn't expect uh, to have such a bad uh, defeat, and and I I do know that the pollsters were were thinking, okay, it could be one or the other. We didn't see the projections as we saw when Hillary Clinton got defeated. When we, you might remember, Laurie, it was like 70, 80, 90 percent probability of Hillary Clinton winning, and then everybody was quite shocked that mm -hmm. Trump had won. Yeah. So I suspect there'll be a lot of uh, self examination in the Democratic Party and. And uh, this is the second time a strong woman candidate was defeated by uh, the Republican Trump. Well, and also criticism, I think, that was leveled at, at Clinton in the time, and Graham brought it up, was that uh, Kamala Harris and the Democrats were sort of targeting the elite, it seemed, it seemed to be, and that people might have felt disenfranchised by her message. Well, the coalition, the, the long-lasting coalition between the working class 
and the Democratic Party, going back to Franklin Roosevelt in the 1930s, that apparently has fallen apart now. Clearly, clearly, last night that's fallen apart as many working class people don't look to, to um, the Democrats to be their salvation, whereas it's more like the college educated people are looking at, at Kamala Harris. So the Democrats really have to reconsider where they are located in terms of the union vote or the non-working, or sorry, the non-union uh, blue collar classes to who is their friend. And it looks like they uh, many of them see that the Republicans is their friend rather than the Democrats. And I wonder about the economic effect on Manitoba. And in fact, uh, to people listening, do give us a call if you feel you might be affected in some way, either in travel or your work or something like that at 204-780-0893 if you think the uh, change in government in the United States is going to affect you. Um, yeah, I was wondering, do you think, will there be direct effects on Manitoba? I suppose tariffs might play into it or uh, tourism? Well, if, if he does implement his campaign promises, he said across the board tariffs on all imports, whether he can effectively put that in, I'm not so sure. One thing, Laurie, is that we've seen the Senate has swung over to the Republicans, that the, the Senate could pass whatever initiatives uh, the, the president now puts forward. We're still waiting, as I understand it, the House of Representatives as to which way that will go. It's likely to go Republican. So that means his ideas about maybe dismantling public health care, the Obamacare, or putting in tariffs or doing things internationally that might be against Canadian interests, that he has a better chance of implementing his desires compared to this time round, compared to when he was his first term round. The other thing that we have to watch for is what about the international stage? Uh, he's a protectionist, but he's also an isolationist. Mm -hmm. So that might have ramifications on different parts of the world, including uh, uh, the Ukrainian-Russian uh, uh, war that's going on, is that if, if we know that he has sympathies with, with Putin, what does that mean? And for many Manitobans who are very concerned about the Ukraine invasion by Russia, they're very concerned about how that will play out. And it will play out differently under Trump than under by, uh, under Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. And um, also, how different do you think this presidency will be from his first go round? Because it makes me think it used to be, uh, you know, when he was elected, people will say, oh, everybody that sort of held their nose and voted for Trump is now seeing the reality of it. But it and, and it was a pretty wild ride when he was president. And yet here he is back. Yeah. So I, I think that uh, one thing, as I was mentioning, the, the Congress will probably be, uh, play along with, with his initiatives. I think also uh, he's angry. He's angrier than he was last time, oh, okay. and he's going to have vengeance. And there'll be a lot of people who will be watching their backside, uh, people who were part of the criminal justice system who went after him, people who, who didn't fix the ballots as he asked them to in places like Atlanta or in Michigan. So he's going to be on a witch hunt, or if, uh, a witch hunt looking for people he uh, uh, is angry with. If I were Pence, I'd be a little bit worried as to... Uh, uh, what he's going to do in, in power. So mm. I think that's the other thing. And the other thing too, Laurie, is, you know, the United States is built on, um, uh, structurally is built on separation of powers, quite different than our parliamentary system. And I mentioned Congress is going to be more on side with him, but also the judi judiciary is the Supreme Court is loaded with judges who he appointed and has made, they've, they've made decisions that allow him to uh, be protected from uh, criminal justice if he's doing these actions while in, in performing, performing his, his, his office's duties. So um, the Supreme Court will not be uh, uh, challenging him in the same way as, as the courts were uh, last time in his uh, first term. Well, let's return to the phone lines and get uh, the point of view of Court. Hello, Court. Hey there. Hi. What would you like hey. to say? Yeah, I think for me, just, you know, I've been in the cannabis industry since legalization in, in Canada here. And uh, when, you know, Biden was coming in, we saw a large surge in, in Canadian cannabis stocks. And I think, you know, there's a lot of people sort of hinging on a, a Democratic leader to bring the federal legalization to the forefront um, in the U.S. market. And I think a lot of uh, Canadian producers are poised to, to enter that market if they haven't already in the states where, where medical is available. So I think in terms of, uh, you know, people working in that sector, um, you know, I, I'm sure that a lot of them are very upset to hear um, that it was a Democratic uh, loss last night. Hmm. 
Interesting, because we were asking people about the economic effects in Manitoba, and of course, uh, particularly so, so much is important cross-border. Yeah. Well, thanks for your call, Court, and I'll ask Chris to comment on that. So, uh, you know, I, I, if you're in, in in the cannabis industry, I wouldn't give up hope with with Trump as the president. He he's very much a libertarian, 